This is Ronald Dilsa II, and I want to invite you to check out the Ronald Dilsa II podcast. The Ronald Dilsa II podcast dives deep into the business of producing film, television, and multimedia. With over a decade of experiences in producing and teaching in the entertainment industry, I thought it was time to drop some knowledge into the world from my own experiences. Not only will you hear countless topics from me to motivate you on your own journey, you'll also hear about the journeys of some amazing individuals I've been super blessed to work with. And guess what? I'm still on my own journey. So get your pens and paper ready. You might learn something. You can check out the Ronald Dilsa Second Podcast on all your favorite podcast platforms. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you with a heart of thanksgiving. We thank you for this wonderful opportunity to have a podcast show. We pray that you bless all the listeners out there. May this show be a blessing for their ears and may it be a blessing for their lives. And most of all, we pray that it may be a blessing for us to share. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. What's up, kings? What's up, queens? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of God, Family, and Business with Ronald Dilts II. And Monique Dilts. What's up, everyone? We back at it again. Yes. Hello, yes. hello, yes. hello. Yes, yes. What's up, yes. family? What's going on, family? All right. So we have a new episode tonight, and it is continuing from our last journey uh, that we discuss. Um, this time, we're going to jump into the lip repair mm. this episode called the lip repair. All right. All right, all right. So, yes, so hopefully everybody's doing well today um, as they listen to this podcast show. So, um, you know, our last uh, our last show, um, if you tuned in, uh, we discussed the assignment and uh, basically getting the news uh, that our son was going to be born with uh, bilateral cleft lip and cleft palate. And so now we're going to continue in that journey and now discuss our journey towards having the surgeries. And Mm. so the first surgery, we're going to start, right? The first surgery, lip repair. The first surgery. Oh, man. Yep. What a journey. You know, Mm -hmm. it's a great reflection for us right now. Okay. All right. Let's talk about it all. So, so, how you doing, my love? You doing I'm okay doing tonight? well, by God's grace. By God's, God's grace, amazing. amen. Yes, he is all the time. How are you doing, my king? I'm doing good. I'm doing good and, um, awesome. you know, just uh, looking good. Making amen. the best. Oh, well, thank you. You're looking amen. better. Amen. Maybe I'm a reflection of you. That's what I was going to say. You took the words <laughs> right out of my mouth. Okay. All right. We'll, we reflect each other. Amen. Through Amen. God's wonderful grace. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So, what was it like, you know, jumping into this uh, this topic? What okay. was it like? Um, how would you describe the NICU? Because our son had to be in the NICU. He couldn't mm-hmm. go to our room right after giving birth. He had to be pushed off away to this this facility that's mm-hmm. within the facility mm-hmm. <laughs> called the NICU. I've never yes. heard of the NICU until mm-hmm. we went through this experience. So the how would you describe it? Intensive Care Unit. I'm glad you remember what it's called because <laughs> to me it's just called the NICU. I don't remember all those technical <laughs> difficulties. You know, I'm just like, I don't remember all the words there. But, um, but yeah, tell wow. us about it. So as a new mom, your first child, it's heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. To not have your child with you as soon as they're born, um, but I will say um, God is so good even in that because the NICU at uh, Winnie Palmer mm-hmm. is a plus, a plus, 
and they really, really give your child uh, more than 100 percent. And they have so many different nurses that are assigned depending on your case. And um, they make sure everything um, is taken care of with our son. It was about feeding. And immediately they took him there because they didn't know if he would be able to um, feed and get in the nutrition that he needed. Um, Latching on, um, they didn't know if he could do that. Um, They didn't know if he would be able to take a bottle. um, So they immediately put in a feeding tube. Yes. Um, And I can continue, but I want to know what your you know, reaction was and what your feelings were around that. I know that I was very anxious. Um, I didn't understand everything. It was a lot to take in. Um, I couldn't even move because I had a C-section. So, Mm. right, you can't move for 12 hours after a C-section. So um, I was there just waiting for the time that I could go see him. Um, You were able to see him immediately. and You were going back checking on him for me until I was able to be wheeled down there in the wheelchair. So what were your feelings even in that those initial visits without me? Well, one, I have to say I'm very thankful your mom was there with us Amen. Um, because I felt very secure leaving um, you to go check on our son. Yes, yes. Um, because it was important for me to make sure both of you were doing well, very well. Yes. And so with Mama Mouchette being there, it was a blessing because yes, <laughs> yes. I knew you were in the best hands you could be with her. Yes, absolutely. Um, Shout out to my mom. Love you. <laughs> we love you, Mama. <laughs> But um, but yeah, it was I remember it just being just I don't know. The feeling was just very numb because it was mm-hmm. just kind of like, I don't know how to feel. You know, my son is in this facility. We can't even bring him to the room. Um, And I kind of was going through the motion and just trying to stay positive through it all. Yeah. Um, And I noticed, you know, he started at this. I think it was level one. If I'm not, I'm not correct. I don't know. It was level one, and he moved up different levels as he got better. With it's like a more critical level, yeah. And initially, okay. yeah. So yeah, so he started on a, you know a more critical level at first because they wanted to make sure he was good, mm-hmm. and then as he started to feed and he's using the bathroom, doing all these different type of things, they moved him up um, to a more, I guess you call less critical mm-hmm. um, facility. So it was quite an experience, and to just have to go and check him out and then bring you the news, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because I know you wanted to be there and you wanted mm-hmm. to go see him. And um, I remember, you know, I was taking family to go see him, you know, our close family. And um, I remember you, that was what encouraged you to get up and move around as soon as you could, because mm-hmm. you want to go see your baby and mm-hmm. hold him. Yep. And so that mm-hmm. motivated you. And I was just like, wow, that's a mom's love right there, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, it was it was quite an experience. And, um, you know, I just I was just like, I can't wait till we can get through this and get our baby and be home. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, and start this wonderful journey that was ahead. That was just like, wow, because, you know, it's one thing, you know, having a baby um, and then having a baby in certain uh, conditions, but then also to not be able to hold your baby and yeah. make sure your baby is doing well and yeah. know that you're there you know, right. for them. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was it was it was very hard, you know, especially those nights, yes. you know, and just knowing he's in the queue and we're in our room patiently waiting for the next day to go spend time with him. So. So, yeah. So it was it was quite a journey. So, yeah, <laughs> very difficult emotionally yes. for me. Because your baby is supposed to be on you and you're supposed to have that skin to skin moment with your child. Mm -hmm. And um, when you can't have that, um, it tears from you. Right. And that's what I felt. And as a new mom, like that really hurt. Mm. It hurt. Now, what would you say, like, okay, we after giving birth, you know, what would you say was probably the most hardest experience? Um, just given after giving birth, would you say, what would you say was the most difficult experience, um, in that whole process for you? Well, the hardest part for me was 
just not having him with me. Mm-hmm. That was just being away from him physically. So yeah. um, when I was able to be there, we were there all day. Right, right. And mm-hmm. then um, we would um, come back up to the room at night and even kind of go in um, as early as we could mm-hmm. and then leave as late as we could um, when it was time. And we did that even when um, it was time for me to go home. Um, mm-hmm. uh, we came back and we stayed as we came as early as we could and we left as late as we could. Mm-hmm. Um, so the most difficult part was being away from him and not ha- not being able to take him home yeah. like oh, when yeah. we were ready to go home like I probably was good after a couple of days to go home but we just stayed Mm -hmm. as long as we could in the hospital just so that we could be near him and um, I will also say another difficult part was the assumption that um, because he was born with cleft lip and palate that he wouldn't be able to feed because mm-hmm. that was the initial assumption. Yeah. So that's why a feeding tube was placed down his throat. So a bottle wasn't even tried, nothing, mm-hmm. you know. And I remember speaking to the wonderful team, um, craniofacial team, nurse um, and doctor. And they were like, no, he needs to be started on something and they made the order right away once I let them know my concerns and once he started feeding on that bottle Mm -hmm. he took it right away right away so it's kind of like hours went by without even trying Mm. and this is where I would help somebody else who is going through the same thing like have your have them try yeah. Initially, don't let them wait. Don't let them give your child a feeding tube if they haven't tried yet. Mm-hmm. Try first, and yeah. once because once he tried, he got it, right, right. and it he just blossomed from there. He took off from there. It's mm-hmm. like he went from an an ounce to a couple ounces, then to three, and then we went from the one day, and then by day seven, we were able to take him home. Mm-hmm. We were able to feed him on demand at that point. Yeah. Because he did so well. Now, I know with me, one of the greatest uh, memories, I would say, you know, besides having our parents there by our side, um, was having Pastor Gray come in and pray yes, that was over beautiful. us in RD3 mm-hmm. um, in, in the NICU. And so yes. that was such a great moment. You yes, know, it was. And uh, yes. never forget that. And all the wonderful pastors and that Pastor prayed Sanchez. over us and and prayed over him. Yeah. Yes. So, it, yes. so a lot of great, great, you know, love and prayers yes. through that. And we're so grateful for that. Oh, yes. And so um, moving forward, what, you know, what were, I guess, uh, what was life like, you know, for us, you know, moving forward after that? You know, I know, I remember we brought RD3 home for the first time. We were so excited. We was planning to go out that Sunday. It was Sunday or Saturday. Um to go to the hospital to see him and um mm-hmm. and basically we got the call on the way that he's good to go home. Mm-hmm. It's just like yep. praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> All we had to do was the um the car seat class. Yeah. I believe it was. Mm-hmm. And um the CPR class. Right. So we had to do that. Um and then we were able to, to take him. Take him. Yeah. And see y'all later. <laughs> we out of here. <laughs> But yeah, so it was very difficult to leave the hospital without our son, too. Very extreme. I cried. That was, yeah. Because we we can't take our son. That's not supposed to, it's not supposed to be that way. You know, you're supposed to be able to leave with your child. Um, But God has a journey for us all. And I will say he blesses you with angels along the way because we had an angel nurse, several angel nurses. um, Mm -hmm. But there's one specific nurse that she actually had experience mm. with cleft lip and palate in her own family. Mm. And because of her experience, um, she was able to take care of R3. And she was the one who helped him latch onto that bottle the way yeah. that he did. And she was explaining it to me. You put it there and you just let them figure it out. Mm-hmm. And he did. Yes. And 
I mean, she took care of him so well. Like right. she was favorite, favorite, just the best, the best <laughs> nurse, yes. the best nurse. So we just give God praise for even having her in mm-hmm. the unit. Right. Oh yeah. So yep, yep. That was a good one. So I remember coming home and we brought him home and um I remember the nurse telling us X, Y, Z, how to take care of him, bathe him, feed him, um, everything to do. We actually tried to get him to latch on. Um, He wasn't able to, so we knew we had to bottle feed, so I would have to pump. And um, I do remember the first night um, we put him in the bassinet right next to the bed. And then we went to sleep, turn off the light. Well, we turned off the light and we said, okay, he's sleeping. He's in the bassinet. Mm -hmm. Let's try to get some rest. And we try to go to sleep, and then, like, in five or ten minutes, <laughs> if that <laughs> it was like, ah. oh man, our lives would change forever, <laughs> yeah. And that's pretty much it. We were running from that moment, yeah. Now, RD3 wasn't one that would like to sleep, he wanted to be up, like, yes. I mean, for the at least the first year, almost, almost. <laughs> but uh, yes. he was one that liked to be up. So we had to actually do shifts with him. Um, so both of us could get some rest um, during that time. Yes. Um, but he was just so excited to be up and to be about and awake and learning stuff. And he just thought he was going to miss something for some reason. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> it was quite an experience, quite an experience. So how did you feel about motherhood at this point? It was new for me. Um, I knew that the experience that I was having was totally um, different um, than what um, other mothers that I knew were having. So for me, it was different. Um, I I didn't understand and I was learning something new every day. Um, I remember wanting to breastfeed, um, but because I could not, I had to pump and I was pumping around the clock and there was a point where my where his demand was um greater than my supply. Mm. <laughs> so it was a lot. And I know you remember that experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did the best that I could and wherever whatever I could not provide at the time, because your initial months your flow is not gonna be as heavy as your later months, but I didn't know that. So that's something that I had to learn and um, I had to supplement a little bit, Um, but um, it was a journey, definitely. Definitely. And I know the enemy, um, he tries to get into your head, get into Mm -hmm. your mind as a mom, number one, um, as a new mom. And then when you have a child with challenges, um, he definitely tries to to break you um, mentally and that's where PPD comes in postpartum depression and I refused refused to have it come in and plague me at all so um it was dark sometimes um I had to pick myself up like listen you have to be here for your child you cannot have any dark moments um But I could tell you that the enemy definitely tried to to get in my head, but I had to stand and make a choice um, that this would not bring me down. I have to. This is something I have to share with the world. And we made a point to do so. Mm -hmm. This is a journey, not just for us. It's a journey for the world um, because there are not many cleft lip and palate children in the African-American community. And it's something that we need to share and put put in the forefront and be comfortable with mm-hmm. to know that this doesn't have to stop your child from having or leading a healthy and normal life. This is just, you know, the beginning you have to get through, which we're, we're going to talk about. Once you get through that, um, everything is smooth sailing. So mm-hmm. it was it was a lot to take in as a mom. Um definitely um as a new mom what about you as a new dad um it it was definitely a lot to take in i mean um cuz just you know talking about some of the things that you were dealing with i was trying to make sure you were okay um and of course make sure our baby was good as well and so naturally um you know juggling <laughs> back and forth and then on top of that working and yeah. trying to make sure everything was good in that nature too um 
So, yeah, so it was a lot. It was very busy. All the doctor's appointments were very overwhelming, busy. Um, And, you know, I made an effort to be at every appointment that I could be and make Mm -hmm. sure you were good. And we both rode together. Um, And so I was thankful for that. It was a lot of busy work and, you know, trying to juggle that and juggle working and, you know, everything else that I have going on. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And so I just thank God for the strength and for allowing us to be strong through that because it could easily broken anybody. Anybody. Um, And so very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. And so to get on to those doctor's appointments, um, I'm trying to go back to now where we first found out that we were going to plan our first surgery, the Mm -hmm. lip surgery. Yes. Um, And so that wonderful team, wonderful mm-hmm. team that we've been working with. They're like family to us now. Yes. Um, and so what was that appointment like when we were finding out, um, finding out that we were getting ready to have that first surgery? So the surgery was scheduled for May 13, 2019. And um, we had to do a pre-op appointment. And I just remember them wanting him to, RD3 to be, um, at least 10 pounds for the procedure. Um, and the reason why they um, wanted him to be a certain weight um, is because of the medications that they may have to give him, that kind of thing, um, for sedation, um, anesthesia. Um, and also, being born with cleft and palate, a lot of times there's feeding problems um, where they may not be getting enough. But I have to say, all glory to God, because... Our son never missed a meal. Yeah, okay. Still a lot of eat. Like <laughs> still do. <laughs> I mean, he put that bottle in the corner of his mouth where it fit and he took off. Okay. And wanted more and more and more and more. So he was actually fifteen pounds wow. plus. So he was like way mm. over the mark that <laughs> they wanted him to be for the procedure. So he was good to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do remember them coming in, letting us know um, the order of things at the time, because it actually switched up a little bit, but they let us know what they were going to do. And I, it was a lot for me. Yeah. Um, I broke down and you, I think I praise God for you because although you had like watery eyes, you didn't, break down and you comforted me and as you held our son and you you kept it together for us Mm -hmm. and I remember um Dr. Ruiz um coming in and him saying the tears are right it's not surgery day yet (laughs) (laughs) and it was like I know I can't help it it's just a lot to take in like it's your first baby Mm -hmm. you don't want them to have to go through anything you didn't have to go through and this is the unknown because we we never we never even really had I I probably had a procedure Um, but we never really had to go through like a Mm -hmm. surgery like this so this was new this was different so in that appointment they just let us know everything that we had to expect 5 30 a.m um check in no eating um the night before which is <laughs> very different for a baby okay Oof. he was three months old actually wait may he was four months old very much april may yep he was four months old so it's like <laughs> You know, you to not be able to feed them when they usually expect a meal. Right. So mm-hmm. I had to wake him up in the middle of the night um, to make sure that he had something before the cutoff time. Mm-hmm. So I think formula was like six hours before. Um, breast milk was like four hours before. So just to make sure that he had something. And I mean... We got to give thanks to God because he was not even crying out that he was hungry the next morning. I was going to just say it's it's almost like the angels Mm -hmm. prepare them and comfort them because, you know, he just seemed very excited. Like it was a normal, normal day. And he just just had this certain glow about him. It was Mm -hmm. just like, wow, like he doesn't even have any idea what's about to go down. And he's just so happy and just enjoying himself you know Mm -hmm. just happy it's like wow and so um 
Yeah, I think one of the moments that I remember probably of that morning of surgery um, was the moment where we we're just trying to, you know, keep it together and getting him ready when we got to the hospital, getting him in the gown, which we had video, I believe, of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and just being extra gentle with him. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember him walking back with the doctors and nurses. Yeah, And it's almost like he was being carried with angels because yes. he was so comfortable and yes. so at peace. So at peace. And it was just like, wow, our baby is going to be just fine. Just fine. <laughs> so, yeah. And so. I have to interject this. I know we're going to talk about it in upcoming episodes. But literally that same moment, all three times, he was at peace. He was at peace. Yeah. And that's why it's like, oh. it has to be angels because only, like, only. like for him to be We're so comfortable ones. and at peace, like, ah, I mean, and just going with the doctors, like yeah. it's nothing like he's, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just like, wow. So they know? were wondering, hey, do we, will we have to give him medication like mm-hmm. to calm down, to go back with us? But. Every single time he was okay. Always fine. Mm-hmm. And I mean, yeah, just amazing. Just such a, a miracle. Such yeah. a warrior. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, so yeah. So what was going through your mind um, at the hospital that morning um, as, you know, you saw our son being taken away? Oh, um, I was good up until when we got into the waiting area. That's mm-hmm. when I started crying. Oh, yeah. I do I remember, do remember that. <laughs> and you held me and you're like, it's going to be okay. I remember mom and dad saying, yeah. it's going to be okay. Um, my mom, mm-hmm. I remember saying, um, it's going to be okay. Um, and I was so happy to have my mom here. Um who waited with us as well in the waiting area and mom and dad dilts waited as well. I and, think that, um, I think the whole family the whole came. The whole family was there. Everybody yeah, came. Yeah, it was so amazing. Yeah, everybody and was that, with us. It's important to have that family because, you know, yes. as we always say, uh, it takes a village to raise a child and yes. our village, our village showed up. Yes. You know, for those surgeries. Yes. So we needed <clears throat> like emotionally, we had the support. Yes. We needed our family to be there mm-hmm. for us. And everybody stepped in. Everybody stepped in. Um, one of our close friends also checked in to make sure we were good. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate her for that. Um, you have no idea how much a text or even a call it right. goes a long way. Yes, it really it does. does. <laughs> so just appreciate it for that and, and even the support on social media from mm-hmm. everybody. Yes. Um that went a long way. So the prayers coming from near, coming from far. Right, right. Um, I really appreciate everybody praying in that moment when I put out there, Hey, he's going into surgery now. We need your prayers. Everybody stopping and praying. Mm-hmm. Um, I was definitely um, anxious, but I remembered the verse, be anxious for nothing. Mm. Just pray and make your request known before the Lord, and mm-hmm. he will give you a peace that passes your understanding. And cast all your burdens on the Lord. I just kept repeating Bible verses um, um, while you were holding me, just repeating Bible verses and praying and then I just released it yeah. and I felt very at peace. Like the word says, he will give you the peace that passes your understanding. I felt that peace and I knew it was going to be okay. I really was just like, okay, this is the smile that I'm used to. Yeah. So now how is our baby going to look like? Am exactly. I going to recognize him? You know, <laughs> so you fall in love with, this beautiful class yes, smile. Um, the smile, it, it's like it radiates from within and you just see their soul. It's just so beautiful. And I just wanted to know if I would have that same feeling or see that same smile again. Mm. And um, before I even continue on to that, <laughs> like, I just want to know your feelings in that moment. Like when we finally saw him walk in and we went back to the waiting area, like, what were you thinking? Um, I need to. Well, first, I want to comfort you and make sure you were good. Yes, because so I was, that was the wreck. first one. And then um, 
I wanted to do something because I'm the one that needs to stay busy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> because if I sit there, I'm going to be thinking about everything and just worrying and being anxious for nothing. Yes. Um, and so I think I I was ready to eat because we hadn't eaten that morning or that whole uh, that entire true. day. So I was like, this would be a great time I to get some food and make that. sure you eat, too, because yeah, you want to think about food. You're always thinking about <laughs> me when it comes to eating because I was not eat for the whole time. Yeah. And so, so yeah, so I was just trying to make sure we, you were good, had some food um, yeah. and vice and versa. I appreciate that. And so um, I want to say we went downstairs to grab something to eat and get you something to make sure you ate. Um, and then after that, we just kind of said, I think um, I brought work with me um, just so I could have something to do to keep my mind off of the time we were waiting, you know, so I was, you know, just trying to keep my mind busy because I know I'll just be thinking about all the things, all the worst things and just trying to pull through. So um, I, ju- I just remember just trying to stay calm and collective and be strong for you. Make sure you're good and um, and just know God got us and yep. got our baby and he's in great hands. We really felt positive about that mm-hmm. um, with the wonderful team that God blessed us with and. We were just, all right, we, we, we can get through this. We can get through, you know, these others, you know, that's the way I kind of saw it and wasn't looking forward to the others, but I know this was our first journey uh, Mm -hmm. on this, on this long journey. And, Mm -hmm. and so, um, and so, yeah, so I was just, I was very proud of us, you know, to get to that point and all that we have had done before then to make sure he was healthy and ready to go. And yes. All the praying, all the prayers and praying as a family and just, you know, just stand motivated through it. And so but um, I think with me having our family there meant mm-hmm. the world. Yes. It meant the world. Yes. Um, they kept us strong even mm-hmm. in that, you know, um, and just make sure, you know, they were there, you know, in case mm-hmm. we need anything, yep. you know, food when mm-hmm. we got home. Mom was cooking and cleaning here, mm-hmm. you know. Um, yes. And so it. It meant a lot to have a family. So. Yes. I'm going to say thank you to my mom again because <laughs> yes. her being here, I didn't have to worry about the house. Mm-mm, Just focus mm. on RD3. I right. didn't have to worry about cleaning, cooking. Just focus on him. And that made a world of a difference. Mm-hmm. It really, really did. So I'm. I have to say thank you to my mom again. Yes. Oh, and then yes. mom and dad just brought some snacks. Yeah, they brought so snacks, food, we had snacks. dinner for a, little, for a couple of days. Mom actually brought, my mom actually bought some sandwiches too, I think. Yeah, packed so, up. So, man, we were, God we is good. We plenty of food. Man, we were <laughs> tremendously blessed to have the entire yeah, family Yeah, mom and there. dad Dills brought us dinner, you know, a couple of meals to last yes. for the week when we got home. So yes. So, yeah, so family is a makes a big difference. So, yes. So what was it like to see our son after this surgery? This yes. first surgery, so, lip surgery. Wow. So we did not know what to expect at all. Yes. Like, I mean, you see <laughs> the transformation. <laughs> like you look at pictures. I know I did. I looked at pictures of previous work done on cleft lip and cleft palate um, children. Um um, the doctor's office also showed us the work that they've done on other patient, uh, other babies. And, you know, for me, it was kind of like, you know, was I ready to let this go? I'll, I know that this is what he needs. He, you need a lip to be able to eat better. Right, That's, right. You know, um, I knew this was necessary. All the procedures were are necessary, but it's like, was I really ready? You know? So I remember the lady saying, all right, you know, he's um, gotten out of um, the procedure and he, we're just waiting for him to wake up. Uh-huh. But you guys can come on back. And it was like, OK, let's go. We like jumped up. We, did, <laughs> we was like, bye, family. We're going to see y'all, see y'all soon. <laughs> and we jumped up and we were just ready to go. And um, they were talking to us. Yeah, he looks great. Da, 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 da. We were like, OK, we just want to see him. Yeah. And I remember going back there and they were like, here he is. And I looked at him and I'm like, oh, my God. Right. Who is this baby? Like, <laughs> RD3. Yeah. Like, who are you right now? Right, right. Like, 
he looks so different. So different. And a lot of it had to do with the swelling. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he was really swollen. But just the anatomy of it all. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, he looked great. Like, you could see the nose, um, how they put it together. Um, and then his lip, how they put it together. Um, did a spectacular job. Mm-hmm. Um, but he looks so different and it was like, I didn't even recognize him initially. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I was like, is this really my son? (laughs) Is this our son? Wow. And it was just like, oh my goodness. I I couldn't believe that was him. And I, you know, I was just like, wow, I was taking it all in. Yeah. How did you feel? I felt the same. I felt the same. Um, you know, it was just like, wow, you know, so proud of him. Yes, you know, for and being so strong, and yeah. He just had this look on his face, like "Get me out of here, please! Okay. I want to get in your <laughs> arms." Um, but yeah, I I felt the same way. It was just like, "Who is this baby?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's like wow. <laughs> like what happened to our cleft lip? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you get so you so don't realize attached. how attached. <laughs> like when you hear other parents say, "You're gonna miss it." Yeah, you don't understand until you see him looking different, and it's like. Oh my goodness. Yes. I miss it. You know? Yeah. But then you take him in and you see the changes and you love him even more. Even more. Because you just wanna help him get through this this phase um Mm -hmm. of life that he's going through, this procedure that he's going through. Yeah. And those were the those were the hardest hours. Yes. The hours right after after surgery. surgery. Those were the most difficult. Trying to get him to eat. the hardest um, mm-hmm. after that. And uh, he's a fighter. He has a very strong, you know, spirit about fighting for everything he wants. And yes, uh, he doesn't he, quit. He doesn't quit. Mm-hmm. And even this day, you know, mm-hmm. everything he does, he he does it until he gets it. Mm-hmm. And um, and so he kept trying and trying. And, you know, the goal through all of this is, you know, the message that I would say to parents is just you got to stay strong for your child. Yes. Um, stay positive, you know, and yes. that's what we did. We stayed strong and positive through that experience, um, though it can be very emotional. Try not to cry in front of them because yes. they're looking at your every move and moment. Yes. Um, and they just want your love through that. They yes. want to know that they're safe and secure. Uh, what would you add? I mean, you said it. You said it all. I mean, um, it was very difficult to see him try to use his new lip yeah. and new mouth. Like, hey, everything is different now. Like, why can I... I just was feeding on this bottle yesterday. Why can I get it today? Right. And it was very hard to see him try and try and try. And he just kept trying. He wouldn't give up. Um, it was hard to see him want to eat, but couldn't okay. because he mm-hmm. was not able to um, you know, use his mouth yet. He was he had to adjust. And it's a hard process, but it's a process that's necessary right. because they have to learn how to use their new anatomy. They mm-hmm. have to learn how to use it. Um, so you definitely said it best. Um, definitely don't be emotional in front of them. You have to be strong. You have to show strength and you have to be encouraging and you have to just just keep going at it. Let's try again. Let's try again. Let's keep trying. Let's mm-hmm. keep trying. I know it didn't it didn't go through this time, but we're going to get it again this time and just keep trying. It's a lot of crying. It's a lot of frustration. Um, but you have to hang in there and I promise you those hours um as they go by it's going to get better and better and better from 1 ounce to 2 ounce to 3 ounces to 4 ounces until they get it all. And I do remember um even at one point, like, how can we help him? Mm-hmm. How can we help him? Because he's not getting any nutrition and he needs his strength. So I do. Rem- I did remember the nurse in the NICU, how she said um, her aunt fed her cousin. And um, I remember her saying she is a dropper. 
Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, well, we have syringes. Let's try to syringe some. And so he can at least get something. And, yeah. I, and I was like, oh, my goodness. Why didn't we think of this before? <laughs> right. Why didn't they let us know that we can do this? So once we started syringing some in, um, he got strength. Yeah. So once he was able to get that strength, he started taking in more and started mm-hmm. trying harder and trying harder. And then he got it. He got like it. he got it really quickly after that. And um, I remember him getting out of surgery really early. Um, I mean, he was the first patient of the day, but he got out really early that morning. But he didn't actually start using the bottle until six o'clock that mm. night. Wow. So yeah. he had been trying all, all day, day, all day. He was so mm-hmm. tired that when he finally got the bottle, he had it all and went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like I remember now. that. And then I do remember when he finally got it in that same moment that he was getting it, Pastor Sanchez called us oh, and yes. was like, hey, how's it going? What I just finished angel. praying for my little preacher. <laughs> yes. And we love you, Pastor We Sanchez. were like, do you understand? You called right when he, he was, got the bottle. Like, thank you just so much and for praying it. for him. See? Yes. Oh, boy, I tell you, Lord. We have some angels out yes, there, some yes, great pastors, man. Yes. We appreciate all of y'all. Yes. So thank you, Pastor thank Sanchez. You. Thank you. And your family. Um, and so to bring some more light, because, you know, we're getting ready to wrap up here. Um, you started a business through all of this process. I did. Tell us a little bit um, about that. I did. Um, to support the journey of RD3 and uh, his procedures, um, I'm going to say we, cause I never say I with us. Mm-hmm. Um, we started, um, a t-shirt business and, um, initially the first shirt said fearfully and wonderfully made. And that was capturing RD three in a Bible verse. Yes. He is fearfully and wonderfully made Love perfect, perfect from birth all the way up until now, even. Mm-hmm. Just perfect. And he is God's creation. And that's the verse that came to mind. And um, when we put it out there and we asked for support, um, that everybody responded. Like that that shirt is probably the best selling shirt that um we had up there. Yeah. And I just want to thank everybody that um supported and purchased a shirt um to support RD3's journey. Um there's other Bible verses that um, we're putting on shirts as well. Um, there's other shirts uh, um, that are up there as well, but definitely focusing on the Bible verses because they're uplifting. Mm-hmm. And literally when somebody sees it, every time we go somewhere, we have a Bible verse on our shirt. Somebody is always like, yes, oh, yeah. I love, know that. God it. bless you. And <laughs> it just, I or I love that. your shirt or where did you get that shirt? Um, So, the Bible verse shirts are definitely the shirts that we're leaning more towards because they're uplifting and mm-hmm. they really, really um, help somebody and uplift their day. So, so where can people um, see, you know, or order um, shirts and all that good stuff? You can head to moniquedilts.com slash shop, or you can just head to my website, moniquedilts.com and message me. If you want a specific shirt um, with a specific Bible verse that you want on a shirt, um, but you can just go to the shop and there are um, several selections there that you can choose from. There you go. Now, Monique Diltz is going to get the Bible verse situated and why she does as we get ready to close out here. We want to definitely let you know that you can uh, stop by MoniqueDilts.com and check out more on the blogs of this topic. You know, she has a full blog on every surgery that we had. And of course, we're going to talk about it as we continue moving forward. So, love, what's the Bible verse for tonight's show? Well, the Bible verse is coming from Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Amen, amen. If you want to know more about this procedure, head to moniquedilts.com slash blog. And it's the lip repair post. 
Thank you. And major shout out to DJ Frosty for this beat, man. We appreciate you. We appreciate you, DJ Frosty. All right, y'all. Have a good night. Be blessed. Be blessed. Until the next time. Thank you so much once again for tuning in to another episode of God, Family, and Business with Ronald Dills II. And Monique Dills. Until next time, may God continue to bless your faith, your family, and your business.